Today, I'll be comparing latency in CockroachDB and AWS Aurora, specifically when it comes to multi-region or as AWS calls it, global databases. First, I'll spin up a global database in Aurora and I'll spin up a CockroachDB multi-region serverless cluster. Just to lay the foundations for the architecture, there'll be a application running in London, which will be talking to a CockroachDB node in Ireland, an application on the East Coast, which will be talking to a CockroachDB node on the East Coast. And in the AWS instance, I'll have my application in London talking to a database in London. So I'd expect to see the latencies slightly lower there because the hop from London to London is shorter than the hop from London to Ireland. First, I'll spin up a CockroachDB serverless cluster. I'll base this in AWS as I'm comparing against AWS. I'll create two regions. One I'll place near me and another I'll place the other side of the pond. I'll call this latency comparison and I'll create that. With that created, I'll create a SQL user and generate a password. I'm not going to try and mask anything from you. I'll be deleting all of this shortly. And just for fairness, I'll make sure that I'm targeting this specific instance of the database. Now with CockroachDB, every node can handle reads and writes. So I'll use the same URL for this test for CockroachDB. Next, I'll spin up a global database in Aurora. And what this will do, it will create a global Aurora database across EU West 2 and US East 1. I'll get the default VPCs for both regions. I'll create an open security group. By the time this is published, it'll be deleted anyway. I'll create a global cluster into which there'll be a primary and an instance for the primary, a secondary and an instance for the secondary. I'm using serverless for this because I'm also using CockroachDB serverless. And with that running, I can run a test for CockroachDB. I'll split the terminal. And I'll take the credentials that I have here. I'll launch a new fly.io app. And Fly allows you to create very small Firecracker VMs, and that will allow me to run tests from the EU, tear it all down, and then run tests from the US. And I'll do that for both CockroachDB and AWS Aurora. I'll create my Fly app, which looks like this. For now, I'll use the London region, and I'll launch the app. Now I'll set my secrets. I'll set this to EU West 1. Set my secrets such that when I do my deploy, it has all the environment variables it needs. I'll now deploy the application. We'll see the application is deploying. The AWS Aurora cluster is still coming up. I'm not sure why, but as of about a couple of weeks ago, this step takes forever. So what I'm actually testing here is I'll have a database cluster spanning both US East and EU West, and I'll deploy an application first near me, and then I'll deploy an application near the US, and I'll be writing to those database regions. Now, I would expect low read and write latency from CockroachDB because every node can handle reads and writes. Whereas in AWS Aurora, I'm creating a global database that has a primary region in EU West and a secondary region in US East. That means that users over here will be able to read and write to the EU West database, but users over here will only be able to read from their secondary replica. They will have to write to the primary instance still. To get around this, you could create separate primary instances of the database, but that means you're working with separate databases, all of which need to be configured and upgraded separately. And because there's only one instance of each primary write node, every time you need to update, all of them will require downtime. I really hope fly.io speed this thing up. But we have plenty of time as Aurora is still deploying. Here we go. And once the deploy has finished, which will be any second, we'll start to see metrics in the logs.
and that would be a rolling average of read and write latencies. And now we're connected to the database and you can start to see the rolling average of read and write latencies coming in. Around 20 milliseconds read latency and around 21 milliseconds write latency. Now I'll stop that application and now I'll run the same test but simulating a user in the States. So I'll change my TOML. So now be on the East Coast and I'll change the region I'm speaking to. This is optional. Cockroach will figure out which region it needs to speak to, but just for the sake of the test, I'm going to be very explicit in the region I'm talking to. I'll launch the app. I'll deploy my secrets. And I'll deploy. Again, this will take a little while, but AWS Aurora is still deploying, so we've got plenty of time. It's actually now creating the secondary cluster, so if I come and look here, refresh the page, we'll start to see that we've got our global database, the primary is coming up, and the secondary is being created now. So we'll be able to use that in a minute. While we're waiting for that to come up, I'll show you the code quickly. We read some environment variables, a read URL and a write URL. I make the distinction because Aurora has separate read to write instances. You can read and write to the same node, but for the sake of the secondary instance that I'll be testing when I pose as a US user, I'll need to differentiate the two. I take a region that's used to help CockroachDB identify into which region it should pin the data. I initialize the write connection and ping it to test, and I initialize the read instance and ping it to test. I then set up some plumbing to handle control C and then start working. So I create a timer that goes off every second and will write and read to the database. The read will make a request for the ID that I just wrote to the database. If it doesn't find it, I'll sleep for a short period of time and then make the request again. So in the case of Aurora, I'll write to the primary instance and I'll be reading from the secondary instance. So there'll be a delay involved there. And finally, I just spin up a rolling average. So I create a windowed buffer of values from which I derive an average value. And with that running, let's take a look at Fly. So what we can see is the US client is talking to the US database and it's getting around five millisecond round trip for reads and around seven milliseconds round trip for writes. I'll destroy that app now for when AWS Aurora is ready. I'll switch the fly region back to the UK and I'll see how the deployment's going for AWS. Almost there now, just the secondary instance to go. When that finishes, I've asked Terraform to output the instance endpoints for me to copy paste. Okay, that's finished. So now I'll simulate someone close to the primary region. I'll take the primary endpoint for writes and paste that over the top of the endpoint there. And then I'll take the primary endpoint for reads and I'll copy it over the top of here. I'll launch the application again, just making sure quickly that I'm talking to the right place. This is close to the primary AWS region. I'll launch the app. I'll deploy my secrets. And I'll deploy the app. I was hoping it would have been finished by now. Right, here we go. Cool, so now that's running. Okay, I'll let that run in for a second. But at the moment, it looks like we're seeing latencies around the three millisecond mark for read latency round trip and write latencies of between 15 and four milliseconds. You're seeing two of each value at the moment. And that's the same with the cockroach example. I've got two runners in fly, both talking to the same database. So one of them's seeing around three milliseconds and 19 milliseconds of latency. And the other one's seeing around three milliseconds of read latency and around four milliseconds of write latency. What I'll do now is I'll tear that infrastructure down 
and I'll spin everything up again, but this time in the states. And note that this is closer to the secondary region, so I'd expect latencies to go up now. I'll copy the secondary endpoint for reads, and I'll paste that over the top of the read endpoint. And I'm changing that because I have a read replica that's in the secondary region and hence closer to me now. So there's no point in making a cross pond request for writes and reads. I'll launch the application. I'll update my configuration. And I'll deploy. And then I'll wait. And with that deployed, we'll start to see read and write latencies. Again, I'll give it a second to settle in. And what we can see is one of the applications is seeing around 516 milliseconds for read round trips with a latency of 130 milliseconds for writes. And that can be explained by the amount of time that it takes the US client to contact the primary database in the EU and make the write and the amount of asynchronous replication time that it takes to get from the primary to the secondary instance. And we can see we're hovering around the 500 millisecond read latency mark and 110 millisecond write latency mark. I'll take that down one last time. Every node in CockroachDB is the same, and it took us building CockroachDB from the ground up to escape the confines of primary and secondary database infrastructure. And that allows us to be a completely distributed database. Aurora is a half distributed database in that you can place your nodes in different locations, but replication is always asynchronous. So it's only half distributed. For any given database cluster in Aurora, you can only write to one place in the world, and that's the primary instance. And by harnessing CockroachDB's topology patterns, like regional by row, for example, users around the world can enjoy low read and write latencies no matter where they are. Join me next time when I'm comparing CockroachDB's read and write latencies against another cloud service provider database.